So, so when you think about, okay, so Battlefield 4 and, and it's like, yeah. when I think about Battlefield, I think about Battlefield 4 and I think about Battlefield Hardline. That, that, I mean, that's it. And Battlefield 1942, which was an arcade game, which did extremely well. It did extremely well. And, and the fact that, you know, we're, we're not there to recapture, you know, that lightning in a bottle, as they say, I think they should definitely consider that. Uh, so, so Battlefield 1942, uh, definitely a hit. So you're saying Battlefield Five, Battlefield One was not. Uh, Battlefield uh, Four is the is the one. It's yeah. it's the so so if it's if that's a foundation that they should pull from, why don't they just remake Battlefield Four as an interim <laughs> game? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like as an interim game, make Battlefield Four. And then build the next version of Battlefield at another time. Like, why? Why didn't they ever remake? You know that particular title. Uh, any thoughts on that? I think that's interesting. The fact that that's one of their best titles, and we haven't yeah. seen it since. No, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that is definitely one of their best titles. And the first thing I thought when I saw twenty forty two, I was like, "What are we doing here? I don't care about what happens in the future." I want war right now. I want, I don't, I don't want spaceships. Call of Duty, when they did the Infinite Warfare, I checked out completely. I was like, not interested. If I want that, I play Halo, I play Destiny. You're barking up the wrong tree. So to me, that was an instant turnoff. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I think they, that actually makes even more sense that they really should go back to Battlefield 4, get those classic maps that everybody loves, find exactly. a way to some new ones you know you can have some newer weapons and whatever but stick to what works <laughs> you have to stick uh, to what works okay so um any final thoughts on that i know i know it's this it feels sad but it feels like there's yeah. still hope right um any final words on on the the battlefield situation well i know that marcus Lato, wherever he goes whatever he did, does next it's going to be incredible because i mean he worked on halo he did that uh, his own studio for a while when he did Disintegration. You remember Disintegration, that? Disintegration. That was really cool. First person shooter, RTS, all in one bottle, you know, just hovering around, commanding your troops from your, your little ship and you're attacking from up there in a first person combat. So, I mean, that was a super cool thing. So I wonder, does this mean that he's going to get an opportunity to branch out and do something awesome, head up his own studio? You know, is he going to take up a job somewhere that he's always wanted to work at? Maybe that's why. Maybe it's kind of hopeless with the whole battlefield thing. And that's why he's like, right, dude, this isn't going anywhere. It's a Titanic. You know, we need to just abandon ship and try something else. I don't know. But I'm so, excited. so here's. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited, too. So here's the thing. Right. So what if. He's making his rounds back to 343 Industries. Oh, I mean, oh, we have oh, to oh. speculate. We okay. have to speculate, right? Because I think uh, one of the guys that was at Ridgeline, um, uh, and I may be saying this incorrectly, but I, I definitely want to read it. Okay, so it says, uh, as spotted by Battlefield Connoisseur, uh, it says, Danny on PC and Insider Gaming, Ridgeline Games currently has no job openings on its career site. And Ridgeline's mm -hmm. co-founder and art director, Chris Matthews, also left the studio in January 2024 to join Halo developer 343 as studio art director. Okay. So now mm -hmm. what if, based on the current state of Halo, that Marcus would end up back over there? Any thoughts on that? Mm, that would be really interesting because I know we have a lot of news coming out right now that they canceled a lot of stuff relating to Halo, like the Battle Royale that Creative Assembly was working on, which Creative Assembly usually does the Halo Wars titles. Um, then we also know that they canceled campaign DLC and PVE content. They eventually got Firefight out the door, but you know, Halo Infinite kind of implied that there was going to be an infinite amount of Halo and not just maybe the multiplayer updating over time, but maybe single player and telling an ongoing story throughout that. So it implied that it was going to be a hub for all things Halo. And even Assassin's Creed is trying to do that with their whole, uh, whatever it's called, Unity or 
Nexus or whatever they call it now. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you go one place, you access all the new games and, and you right. can just pick up from there. Um that could be really exciting, dude. If he comes back I know, Halo, I know. and you get back to the good old days, right? Like Halo right. He was on exactly. Combat Evolved, um, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Reach. I mean, you get back to some of the best days of Halo and and pull from that and and do whatever new stuff you want to do with the series. That could be incredible. That could be incredible. Exactly. So especially when you look at where Halo is right now, it is in a good place. And a lot of individuals who are currently playing Halo are really happy with the experience that they have right now with the title. And again, going back to what we were saying before, when it comes to what we're currently playing and what we're currently enjoying, all of the companies are going back to basics within the playlist that they're offering uh, for us. You know, we have Destiny. Destiny's considering doing something, as I was saying before, all weapons, no supers. I mean, that's brilliant. Why not do that? Wow, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now that's going to take away maybe a portion of the individuals who are playing a lot of Modern Warfare right now because there's no supers. It's just pure skill with, you know, however you have whatever weapon you decide to use in that particular game. So, and then you have the remakes. You mentioned Tomb Raider. Going back to basics again. Hey, let's capture what we know that there's a base for. These individuals are going to buy this particular title while we're building the new thing, right? Then you have Battlefield 4. Why not capture that, right? Grab the individuals who are still waiting for a Battlefield game that they could really go back to, you know, with the new technology. Same thing that Modern Warfare did. They did it for Modern Warfare 2. They did it for Modern Warfare 3. And they're probably going to do it for the next Modern Warfare as well, using all the new technology that we have now, but yet keep the core gaming um, the, that play that we've enjoyed uh, over the years. So it's very interesting. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, Marcus Leto going to, you know, 343, you know, as a consultant or some kind of, you know, leading role. And it's going to be good times for whoever decides to either collaborate with him or offer him, you know, a big check. So we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, They've had a lot of people enter and exit if you've noticed throughout Halo Infinite's development cycle and just its continuous support over the years. So I really hope they can find some stable ground because that's that's scary, man, <laughs> for anybody involved. Developers, gamers, everything across the board, that's, that's kind of a nightmare having so many creative differences or whatever it may be. 